Ralston, me. And this is the Marshall pickups we're talking about. Um, I use this now for about 10 years or so, no, nearly 10 years, nine years or so. And uh, in this position, I have an Aegis 3, and in that position, no Aegis 3, and this one is a stock cab, and I hardly ever use that. Uh, the reason I like them very much is because of the fact that uh, they, they get more or less the same sound as a Fender pickup, but it's a little warmer and a little more powerful, plus it doesn't hum at all. You know, it's completely hum free. <laughs> You can hear, you know, in this position, you get that really round. I use this for arpeggios. Use that. Gets much sharper, you know. And in the middle, you hear how it humps. Yeah, this one does it. That's why it's so good, you know? Cool. Upstairs. You know, one of the whole points of being a musician for me is you don't have to do boring adult things, even when you're a boring adult. So, uh, you know, I still have all my dinosaur toys hanging up and, you know, stairs to put my slinky on and a whole room full of toys. But for me, toys are guitars. Too much fun all the time. <laughs> These uh, these pickups in here now. Uh, these are both PAF Pros, which have a nice kind of, a little bit of a Michael Schenker kind of aw uh, to it, uh, best way I can describe it, and it uh, sounds something like this. <laughs> is still real chunky. You know, if I do like the fast picking stuff, it comes out pretty clear. And it still has a lot of aggression in the Gary Moore kind of sense. You know. I played and the more bands I was in, the more familiar I got with, with all the different tones you get from pickups. And, uh, you know, it's, it's almost like, like having a wah-wah pedal where you can uh, leave it stopped in certain places and have like a sort of a e or a aw or a o kind of sound, you know, different frequencies. One thing that's been real important to me lately is having certain combinations of pickups. I used to wear all my pickups, all my humbucking pickups in parallel because 
I got a much better cleaner sound and even the distorted sounds were a little bit cleaner but I found with using a single coil in the middle uh, that I can get that same kind of thing even even more radical I can get even cleaner tone which is real nice to have you know. um, at the moment I'm using a real simple amp rig in the studio and in live just just a head and maybe a couple pedals and uh, that way I don't have to rely on all kinds of different channel switching and uh, I can get a, a lot of variety of tones out of just uh, the five-way switch on the guitar. The, um, the thing that was just completely blew me away was uh, the combination between the humbucker and the single coil at the same time. And just leaving the volume up just a little bit. It gives you a real twangy kind of Hendrix, yeah. Real twangy kind of tone. <laughs> which is, is so much fun to play with. And at the same time, you just you can flick the switch right over and, and still get the heavy metal kind of... Uh... Well, my favorite pickup at the moment is probably the uh, Tone Zone, which I don't have here at the moment because uh, it's a rehearsal. And uh, really the main difference between that and, and something like the PF Pro is it's a little more exaggerated. It's uh, got a little bit more of that EQ kind of awe to it. And it's also a little bit less fuzzy. <laughs> with old weird sort of eclectic instruments things that aren't necessarily valuable but that are unique and uh, usually when I find something like that it's it's got some really terrible pickups in it so I've really uh, tested the limits of some of the DiMarzio staff in uh, having them trying to fix some of these pickups to make them sound good and uh, especially because I, I usually request that they cosmetically leave them so they look the same. So it's just as cheesy looking as when I bought the guitar originally. Uh, this particular in instrument is a Monza, what a name brand, and uh, had some real horrible pickups in it. And uh, I sent them back to Steve Blucher, and he just took the original outsides of them and, and stuck some fast track pickups in there. And uh, they sound amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it's so much fun to play something like this because it's sort of like uh, trying to win the Indy 500 in a, in a Volkswagen, you know, but with a giant engine in it. And, uh, oh boy, every time I look at this thing, I just, just like supreme tackiness. Well, this one just came in the mail today. My uh, new $80 special, the Gilbert Les Paul. Uh, some people from the music store called me up and said this was sitting around, so I couldn't pass it up. And a uh, perfect example of... Uh, you know, how to make a cheesy thing like this sound good. At, uh, I think I'll probably end up sticking, like, Tone Zone in here. You know, my, my favorite pickup that goes, aw. And uh, maybe one of those, uh, what do you call them? Humbucker from Hell. <laughs> how, do, how can I forget that? Well, maybe uh, the Humbucker from Hell. I, you see, I, I never remember the names of these things. I just stick them in and go, well, that sounds cool, and immediately forget what it's called. So uh, probably one of those in here, because give me the, the cool twang so it won't be too muddy. Give me that woody tone, and, uh, and I'll be set.
I've been using the DiMarzio pickups since, oh man, I don't even know, a long time ago. So they first came out and they used to be white. These white pickups would stick in there and it'd be very obvious you had replacement pickups on your bases because they'd be the only white pickups you could get. So I had them on for years like that and now they make them in black so we have them like that now. But it's basically a real transparent thing. And um, uh, to me, I, since you don't want any changes occurring in the sound from the pickups, to have it be a relatively flat and unencumbered sound, uh, it's important for me to have it real loud to be able to pick up what's on there and be able to deliver it uh, loudly to the output of the instrument, to the input of the amp. And that's uh, probably the primary uh, thing I look for. Uh, I've tried a whole bunch of different pickups. And there's interesting ones that sound different, and they got a little different uh, color to them, a little bit of different change or whatever. But for me, um, and you could probably do that with almost any pickup by wiring it different or whatever, but uh, I just like to have it pretty transparent, just loud, big. So it's one less thing to worry about in the chain of command that goes from fingertip to the speaker moving the air and the listener's ear. Now, the EBO pickups, the only problem with them was is they were... Uh, they were muddy and they were unclear and, th and they don't make them anymore either. So um, DiMarzio made a Model 1 pickup for years which was designed to replace the EBO pickup and give it that clarity. So when I finally got rid of my EBO pickup and put the DiMarzio Model 1 in there, it uh, gave me all the advantages of the old EBO style pickup plus with the clarity of the modern technology, if you will, modern in 1975 or 6 as it were. Um, so I, I ran both of them just like my old Fender bass on this bass here, and I have, a, like I said, the separate, the bright, high, and then the super low. So that way, if I'm doing like a, playing like a lot of wacko, wild stuff up top, the low end pickup is still honk, honking along underneath so that you can hear low end, so it doesn't sound like now there's no bass player in the band. So it's a, a, a way for me to do both the rhythm guitar stuff and the bass stuff at the same time, therefore freeing the lead guitarist and everybody else up to, to do what they wanted to. So this is basically a DiMarzio Model 1, and this is a DiMarzio P-Bass style pickup, and that's, that's how it works. I used to have a tone control, but I noticed for years I never touched the tone control. It was just there. And then I read somewhere that you can get a little bit more output from the instrument if you cut the tone control out. It's one less link in the chain for the sound to have to go through, for the electricity to go through. And um, so I just cut the uh, tone control out with the, you know, in a hotel room with the snippers or something. I didn't really know what I was doing. I figured out, finally I plugged it in, thank God it worked for the next gig. So we figured out to actually get the thing working again. So it's just a straight, straight output without anything on it. Then again, it's real important for me to uh, have the sound unencumbered by anything. Just have my fingers on the strings and then to the speakers as best as possible. Even though you'll see me with a huge rack of stuff, what the rack of stuff basically does is mimics the way the instrument sounds as I'm sitting right here with it off. Uh, one important aspect of a pickup is uh, to be heard and not seen, as opposed to young children. I mean, it's, uh, it's very important for me to n not have the pickup interfere with the chain of command and sound from fingertip to speaker. Uh, in other words, to be very transparent, to be very, um, uh, just a link in the chain. And a chain being as strong as its weakest link, and it's important for me to have the pickup be very loud, very accurate, very smooth and clean, and basically reproduce what's happening on the strings to get that to the amplifier. So, to take the mystery out of what's happening with the sound, to put on a, a pickup that you know is used by, you know, everybody. It's kind of a standard of the industry. You know that you're working at least from square one. Singular most essential thing to have on an instrument to make it sound good is to have a good pickup on there. So I, uh, the first thing I do when I get an instrument is put what I use standardly so that it's no different from any of my other ones. I just put the old DiMarzio right in there and work from square one right there. I've used enough for almost 10 years. And uh, 
check it out. It's really good.